for things to fall, and that includes cholesterol. Plant stanols can help it tumble down. They're found in the heart of the pine forest, and they're also found in Benacol. In fact, only Benacol contains plant stanols, which help your cholesterol fall by 7 to 10 percent. Benacol, proven to lower cholesterol. Get all the calls, texts and data you need for just €25 Euro a month when you switch for value with Tesco Mobile. Abbey Hotel in Roscommon this evening for the People's Debate in the Roscommon Galway constituency. And with us are two of the three TDs, Michael Fitzmaurice, who's an independent TD, elected in 2014, and Dennis Nocton, who's also an independent TD. He was elected to the Dáil in 1997 as a Fine TD, elected as a Fine TD again in this, all the elections since then, including the last election. But he resigned from the Fine Gael party because of his ob objection to the failure of Fine Gael to abide by his promise on retaining A&E in Roscommon Hospital, and we'll get to that um, in a while. We have several of the candidates who are going to uh, take part in the election, and uh, we have with us uh, first, we have Eddie Conroy, who's uh, a member of the People Before Profit Alliance. Uh, we have uh, also with us uh, Anne Farrell, who is a member of Renewa, now, I think you were a member of the Labour Party at one stage, or certainly your brother was. Um, we also have uh, with us Maura Hopkins, who is the Fine Gael candidate, uh, Frank Feehan, who was the Fianna Fáil TD, and is the outgoing TD. He uh, has um, uh, declined to stand in this election. And Claire Carnain, who is a Sinn Féin candidate uh, in this election. To talk about the constituency, do a profile of constituency, we have the local journalist, James Campbell. James. Uh, the company we have is uh, electionhub.ie, and we do political analysis. And the new constituency of common Galway, uh, we actually carried out a poll uh, two weeks ago on the 3rd and 4th of September in the constituency. We picked seven towns in the constituency, from, from Kertober, Boyle, down to at Lowe and Monksland and so on. And our poll, we, we polled 1,127 people. Uh, Fingale got 18.01%. Labour got 1.41%. Fianna Fáil got 28.8%. Sinn Féin got 3.28%. Independence got 33.98%. And Don't Knows were 14.49%. How many seats do you think the Joe Knowles will get then as a result of this? <laughs> that, that, that's the flaws you vote for, and that's yeah. the other people yeah. at the point. You did this on the basis of a, a sample of over 1,000 electors. 1,127 uh, people. Pardon? 1,127. All right, so that it has, so I don't know if you calibrate it in the way that the professional polling groups do, but still it's quite interesting. Uh, we're going to show it on screen. Uh, Fine Gael got 38.6% in the last uh, general election, and now you're showing them only at 18%, uh, half of what they got in the last election. Labour parties got respectable nearly 10% in the last election, now almost wiped out 1.4%. Uh, Fianna Fáil just got 11.6% last time, and they're up to 28.82%, mm -hmm. which means they're guaranteed a seat, if this is correct. Mm -hmm. um, Independence, 18.8% uh, last time, and 33.98, and uh, on that basis, they might, no, they won't get two seats in a three-seat constituency. You'll need close to 50% of the vote to get two seats. Um, but Sinn Féin got 9.76, and it's now 3.28. Uh, That's because the constituency has changed significantly, it's isn't it? It's changed significantly, all right. Balance mm -hmm. Law, Ballygard, Dunmore, are now in, which was common, and South Leitrim has moved back into Sligo Leitrim. Yeah, and, that, and South Leitrim would have been the stronghold for Sinn Féin. It um, would have been for Martin Kenny, Sinn Féin candidate, and the, also the Fine Gael, uh, Frank Fee and the Fine Gael TD would have pulled a lot of votes from South Leitrim, Ballymore, and Carrick and Shannon. Yeah. Um, some of our viewers will remember this constituency because 
Uh, Sean Doherty, who was a controversial figure in Irish politics, Minister for Justice in the brief Fianna Fáil government led by Charlie Hoy in 1982. Uh, and, uh, he remained on in this constituency for quite a while. Also, there was Terry Layden, who is now a senator, and he was a member of this constituency. And the Lenhan family, Brian Lenhan, a senior, was first elected in the Roscommon area. And his father, he was the first, first time ever that a father was elected to the Dáil after his son was first elected, I think, That's right. in this constituency. We don't have any Fianna Fáil person on the platform this evening because uh, the Fianna Fáil haven't, don't have a sitting TD in the constituency, and they don't... Uh, they haven't ha heard their conviction, their, sorry, their convention. <laughs> Fianna Fáil doesn't have any convictions. They haven't heard, uh, heard their convention uh, as yet. Uh, but there are several Fianna Fáil people who own up to being uh, in Fianna Fáil. And there's a man here who's even proud of being in Fianna Fáil. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we'll get to some of those. Uh, but we'll take a break and get into the debate immediately afterwards. So join us then. Center Stage at this year's biggest music and comedy festivals and surround yourself with exclusive performances, your favorite artists and loads of chances to win free tickets. Search Vodafone Center Stage. Sometimes it takes just a little push for things to fall. And that includes cholesterol. Plant stanols can help it tumble down. They're found in the heart of the pine forest, and they're also found in Benacol. In fact, only Benacol contains plant stanols, which help your cholesterol fall by 7 to 10 percent. Benacol, proven to lower cholesterol. Sometimes, you just have to believe you can make it. It was the same when I quit smoking. There were times when I was tempted, sure, but I wasn't on my own. Nicorette Quick Mist worked fast on my cravings and helped me break free from the habit. And now that I have done that, I feel I can do anything. With Nicorette Quick Mist, you're 150% more likely to quit. Now available in pharmacies and supermarkets. Nicorette, do something incredible. Introducing Ireland's new daily digital edition. Read the highlights, read the headlines, and read the writers who read between the lines. Read the recipes, play the recipes. There's also food for thought. No more crossed out words in your crossword. From wordplay to pressing play, with exclusive highlights from the Barclays Premier League to GAA. Seven days a week, any time of the day. The Times and Sunday Times Digital Edition. Try membership, one euro for 30 days. We're a nation blessed with the travel gene. If there are better ways to get around, we'll find them. We're a nation of multitaskers, of food critics, of kings and queens. We're a nation who knows the smartest way to get there. And smart flies Aer Lingus. Get all the calls, texts and data you need for just €25 Euro a month when you switch for value with Tesco Mobile. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we go first to Michael Fitzmaurice. Michael, you've been in the dull, hardly a wet day, and nobody's in a position really to determine whether they should re-elect you or not. What's your reason? What do you say to people who say, why should we re-elect you? Well, first of all, um, I might be in the dull a, a, a wet week. Um, I'm 11 months in the dull. But um, for the seven or eight years before that, uh, Vincent, right around this country, um, I've travelled in the breadth of Ireland um, in the support of ordinary people, um, turf cutters right around this country. That's the first thing. Second of all, I'd be well known for being involved in different community work. Thirdly, I think, you know, over the last, uh, I think it's 11 months I'm in the Dáil at the moment, 
Um, I have worked tirelessly, um, you know, morning, noon and night, to be quite frank about it, and that's our job to do, but um, to represent the people of South Leitrim and Roscommon, and indeed the people in any part of Ireland that contacted me, because I believe that you should try and help everyone as best you can. I'm not a minister, I don't write cheques, but I will give one thing to the people, no matter where I am, honesty, work, hard work, and I will do that to my last breath. You've joined up with Shane Ross um, in a, a loose alliance. Shane Ross is probably the most right-wing TD in the doll at present, which is saying something. Are you comfortable aligning yourself with him? Well, the first thing is, Dennis, um, our... Um, Vincent, <laughs> Vincent. <laughs> The first, the, 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 first thing, the first thing is I think. that um, to make up, say, groupings or look at parties, you have people from all different backgrounds. Because if you had all millionaires uh, together or if you had people that were from a lesser background, then you won't get the whole picture of a country. I believe that like in any walk of life, you need people from different walks of life, people that have travelled different roads, to bring different ideas together to make things work. Yeah, but people usually align themselves with people who share the same views on the kind of society we have. You might, for instance, be in favour of redistribution in society. I don't think Shane Ross is in favour of well, redistribution actually, in society. Actually, if you uh, read what or go through what Shane Ross has talked about, even in the Dáil, he has been involved in the technical group and he has actually talked about redistribution. I have... He's talked um, about it, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. fair enough, but he has... I have... I have basically, uh, for the last 10 or 11 months, um, you know, drove a path about rural Ireland, about rural Ireland Irish issues. And I believe that you need someone from Dublin to basically, you know, tell us how that's going as well. Shane Ross never been in rural Ireland in his life. Well, actually, he has but, been, but, but, in, in, in case that you didn't happen to be looking yeah, at the television, he was down in Tullamore with us. Um, and some people said, did you give him a tom-tom? No, I didn't. The man founded himself. The man is glad, was glad to be down there. And actually, next Friday, we are coming to the Hudson Bay and at Lone uh, for a gathering again. All right, Dennis Lockton, you were in Fine Gael during the good times when you could say anything you liked in the back benches and you could demand anything off of the front benches of Fine Gael, but when the hard choices had to be made by Fine Gael and government, you abandoned ship. No, that's not true, uh, Vincent. I didn't abandon ship. Fine Gael expelled me. Uh, they expelled me for a commitment Abandoning that the Taoiseach... No, a commitment that the Taoiseach, the Taunish, the Minister for Health made. In fact, the Taoiseach came to this town during the last general election to give a commitment uh, in the square in Roscommon to the people regarding health services here. The Fine Gael also gave a commitment in relation to health services in Port Yonkla. And when, a couple of weeks after the general election, the government were going back on that clear, unambiguous commitment, no, I wasn't prepared uh, to stand and roll over. I was prepared to stand with the people, stand by this issue, because what was being used and the figures that were being used uh, to uh, justify the closure have subsequently been found to be false. And I've been prepared not just in relation to Roscommon Hospital to stand up. When Portiuncula Hospital uh, was being undermined, uh, I stood up and defended that hospital, as I've done in relation to the Sacred Heart Hospital recently, when its reputation was being dragged through the mud. Because what we need in politics is people that are prepared to stand up and be counted. Prepared to stand up and be counted when all others are prepared to run away from the issues. And it's not just in relation to health services. But you run away from the hard decisions. No, Fine I Gael, not. Well, the argument Fine Gael makes is that it came in at very difficult decisions to make to get the country back on an even keel again, which it claims to have done. And they did that by taking tough decisions, including the decision on Roscommon a &E. And you didn't have the nerve or the gut to stay with it. That's the argument. Vincent, first of all, the cost of putting the replacement service into Roscommon Hospital is far greater than the service that was there when the accident and emergency was fully functioning. So it's not a case that it was trying to save money. That was never put forward as a justification. The justification at the time was that the hospital was unsafe, uh, that one in five people that presented with heart attacks were dying there. And the reputation of a fine consultant, the late Pat McHugh, was undermined by, by those figures being thrown out at the time and they've subsequently been proved wrong and sadly today okay. James Dile Riley has failed to apologise to the family of Pat McHugh or to the people of Roscommon in relation to that. Okay.
You brought all your voters with you tonight, did you? <laughs> uh, Maura, uh, Maura, as a Fine Gael candidate, what do you got to say to that? Fine Gael made a solemn promise in the last election that the Roscommon A and E, uh, the Roscommon Hospital A and E, would not be closed. They broke the promise. I suppose in, in terms of that decision, of course, being in government means, as you say yourself, difficult decisions have to be made. Um, I'm a new candidate for Fine Gael, um, and I also have a background in healthcare. I work as an occupational therapist. So I suppose I very much share those concerns around commitments being made that shouldn't have been made at the time. Um, but our focus now needs to be on the future of Roscommon Hospital, and it does have a future with regard to the endoscopy service, with regard to the, yeah, yeah, to yeah. the rehabilitation but just deal with, unit. Deal with the point that, that Enda Kenny and James Riley came down here, made a solemn promise that A&E and Roscommon Hospital wouldn't be closed. They broke the promise. Why should we believe Fine Gael anymore? I, I didn't make that promise. I know. I but you remember, I, I you're, you're running for the party promise. and for a leader that did make that promise and that broke that promise. So why should, fin why should the people of Roscommon support a Fine Gael candidate, given that? I suppose what I would say is that being in government does mean that difficult decisions have to be made. And what we need to work on now is ensuring that we have proper emergency services to ensure that our patients are getting, who are seriously ill or who are injured, get to the proper facilities in time. And that's why we have, um, there have been advances in terms of the air ambulance, which has been given a permanent footing now, which is hugely important to ensure that patients get to the correct centres that can deal with them. A huge amount of patients that were going to Roscommon were then moving on to other okay. centres because Can they were not able to Do you, do you think they were right to close Roscommon A and E? Well, I suppose we have to depend on the information that we are being given, and the information that we are being given is that Roscommon Hospital was not safe to deal with emergency cases. Yeah. And I suppose our focus in terms of future service provision, and there are challenges with regard to that, with regard to the ground ambulance service, but the air ambulance service is very important in ensuring that we get our patients to the correct centre in time. And I, I work with stroke patients. I've worked in an acute, um, an acute hospital that deals with um, admissions of stroke patients. And it's really time is really important in dealing okay. with those patients. Okay, Claire, what do you have to say to that? And they need to have clinical expertise to manage those Claire, what those do you have to patients. say to that? Yes, well, uh, overall, I think Andy Kenny has been a massive disappointment for the West of Ireland. He came down here and, to quote, he said that he would protect and defend the A&E. The day before the A&E was closed, he was interviewed and he said that he never made such a commitment until a recording was brought forward. Then he said that he had no choice, that HICWA report said that the hospital was unsafe. The HSC then said that HICWA never stood foot in Roscommon A&E and, and it never conducted any standalone report on Roscommon A&E. There was absolutely no evidence to suggest that that A&E was unsafe and that is the bottom line. Do you want to come back on that, Mara? I suppose our focus very much needs to be on the future here. And yes, the promises were made, commitments were made that should not have been made at the time. And I can't stand over it because I, I mean, I wasn't. I, I didn't serve as a member of government at that time. But what I am saying is that I am a new candidate, I come from a healthcare background, and I am very much focused on ensuring that we improve our health services. But improving our health services involves ensuring that we get better um, emergency services with regard to ground ambulance and um, continuing to resource our air ambulance service. Okay, uh, Eddie uh, Connor, do you want to comment on this? It hasn't worked in the, all over the country. It definitely hasn't worked in Roscommon East Galway. If but it has worked in terms of us uh, re returning to very significant growth rates and getting to grips with the debt problem. Yeah, so, so, so to we, say that it hasn't worked at all is just not true. Well, it, drive around Roscommon. You'll see well, the I, I'm just saying that we have significant we growth rates now, yeah, which we didn't we have before, and the, the debt burden is being relieved somewhat. No, it's put off. But, but it's been relieved somewhat. Okay, well, it go hasn't on, yeah. been relieved from us. We're still paying. The people who are paying 
for austerity had nothing to do with the crash. But those that did are making money. They're actually richer now than they were eight, ten years ago. And we, we, all we've got down in Roscommon is cuts. Cuts to everything. Cuts to Gardaí, cuts to hospital, cuts to everything. There is money in the country. There's loads of money in the country. The EU reckoned that Apple have 19 billion belong to us. They were belong to us? Yeah, well, it's tax that they are supposed to have paid us. Yeah, but what if they hadn't got that 19 billion? They might have left us. I'm pretty sure Apple have 19 billion and the rest. But it's still, yeah. it's still tax the stew in Ireland. Why, why does every other small business in the county have to pay their tax? If you owe the revenue 19 euro... But they don't because of the deal that no, was but done. But if we owe the revenue they, 19 euros, they'll okay, be down okay, in the yeah, morning. But Apple doesn't owe the money to the Irish revenue because of the deal that was done. No, the EU have said that they do owe the 19 billion. That well, the EU have said that they, the deal was improper. No, they say 19 billion is owed. We should be collecting it. Fine Gael are currently fighting a case. They're paying for the case with public money to argue that they shouldn't pay it to us. So, 19 billion is a lot of money. It fixes a lot of problems. Okay, uh, we have uh, a Fine Gael senator uh, with us, um, uh, Michael uh, Mullins. And uh, Michael, what do you got to say to that? We were four and a half years ago with the economy almost going over the cliff, where people didn't know in the morning whether the, the monies that were in their, in their bank accounts would be safe. I think we've come a long way. That's not I think, true. I that think was not the case when Fine Gael came into government. That was just not the case. It was the, ca it was the it case. It was not the case. The deal had been done with the Troika. We were guaranteed further funding for a four-year period, and that proved adequate. That was not the case when we, uh, Fine Gael and Labour came into government. Well, the situation was, Vincent, that our, 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 our country was in crisis. We're now at a situation four and a half years on, due, due to prudent management and some serious decisions having been taken, that we're going to have growth of 7% this year. And the only way that we, can, that we can deliver the sort of services that the people of Ireland want is by continuing that level of growth and generating the, the income and the finances that will fund all those services. And I think, we've, I think the government have made a decent start. Now, there's a hell of a lot still to be done. But I think we're on the right track, and what's important now is that we have stability going forward and we don't put at risk the, the gains that have been made over the last okay, number of years. Okay, Anne, do you want to comment on this? Um, I would, my person, I'm the Renewal candidate, but I'm coming to this from having had maybe 20, 30 years uh, involvement in politics, from being a student right up. But I suppose the but last... What party were you involved with? Well, as a student, the Labour Party, as a canvasser... You made some leap, haven't you? Not that, well, <laughs> uh, not that the Labour Party is any different. Uh, yeah, well, uh, you see, this is, this is the misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Renewa has... You, you, you win that one. That, OK, uh, thanks. Uh, um, uh, it's good to win with you, Vincent. Yeah, good, yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, Renewa have, without people actually looking a little closer, been tagged with this, you know, conservative, almost ultra-conservative. But, like, if we look a bit closer, it's possible... And I feel I'm coming as a mother and a woman and as a daughter and as, as a person who's predominantly involved in all of the areas we're talking about, caring, childcare, education, health and community development, we're the main participants behind the scenes, but we have the least voice on the front line. And a, for me, Renua have a good value system that is based on family as the centre of society, but actually they're just... Displaying... Apple pie, do you have apple pie as well? Yeah. Yes, whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, but covering yeah. a broad range yeah. of social yeah. issues, yeah, right. and I think they're very dynamic, and actually I do, th and I'd like to think I was a liberal person, but with some conservative values that are good, good yeah. guiding principles. So taken from the old and what's established, and using it to go forward. Oh, That's right. what I would yeah. think. We take a break now, back in a moment. I'm just a regular dad. But to him, I guess I'm a bit of a superhero. Side by side, we're taking down the bad guys. All in a day's work. Headache? There's no time for that. Pain? You're toast. There's still a day to save. So when you want pain gone fast, Panadol Actifast has a unique formula and is absorbed two times faster than standard paracetamol tablets. Panadol Actifast. When pain is gone, life takes its place. 
Introducing Ireland's new daily digital edition. Read the highlights, read the headlines, and read the writers who read between the lines. Read the recipes, play the recipes. There's also food for thought. No more crossed out words in your crossword. From wordplay to pressing play, with exclusive highlights from the Barclays Premier League to GAA. Seven days a week, any time of the day. The Times and Sunday Times Digital Edition. Try membership, one euro for 30 days. Mum's friend said that 91% of Irish toddlers, like me, aren't getting enough vitamin D. And 23% of one-year-olds don't get enough iron. Irish scientific research shows that growing up milk increases my vitamin D and iron intakes. So now Mum gives me growing up milk every day as part of my diet. Cow and Gate Growing Up Milk. Feed their personalities. We're a nation blessed with the travel gene. If there are better ways to get around, we'll find them. We're a nation of multitaskers, of food critics, of kings and queens. We're a nation who knows the smartest way to get there. And smart flies Aer Lingus. Airwaves in a bottle. So you can always keep that kick handy. Get all the calls, texts and data you need for just €25 Euro a month when you switch for value with Tesco Mobile. Thank you. My name is Marie Galuli. I'm a housewife in Roscommon. And the panel have conveniently moved on from the hospital issue and I would like to bring them back to it. The biggest issue in this county before the last general election was the closure or retaining A&E services. Fine Gael came here and on the strength of the promises they made, two TDs were elected, two out of three TDs, the first time it ever happened in this county. And that was on the strength of the promises that they made to the people. The Taoiseach came to this county, stood up in the town. A letter was sent by James Riley to all the people, an open letter committing to keeping that A&E open. Councillors and TDs went door to door, face to face to decent people and promised to keep that A&E open. Short of writing in blood, there was no other way that they could have promised to keep that A&E open. It is not good enough that it has been shut. We do not have equal services here in this county anymore. We have a medical assessment unit that's open from 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. So for even non-emergency services, we can't get into our hospital. We get in Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. That isn't anywhere else in the country. Medical assessment units are open much, much longer than that. And I want to know from the panel what they're going to do about reinstating services to this county. If you ask anyone in this county, would they prefer the services they have today to the services they had four years ago? I can tell you the answer now. Okay, we're going to stay with... We're going to stay with the Roscommon Hospital issue just for a bit. Are you going to speak on the Roscommon Hospital issue? It has been overlooked. Sorry, would you mind giving your name and affiliation? My name is Michael Scally. I'm a former Fine Gael councillor from okay. years ago. Okay. But I'm a floating voter now because I don't know who to vote for in the next election. But I want to bring you back to what Maura said about the fantastic air ambulance service. I would remind you, Maura, that... There is a base in Loch Lynn, which is a small town in the west of Roscommon. It was former Garda station and it was closed. And it was uh, done up at enormous cost and it was supposed to be a base for an ambulance service for the county to replace the accident and emergency in Roscommon. Now we are being promised by Frank Feehan for the last two or three years that it was going to open and it's gone on and on and on. The base is there, there is no ambulance. There are no personnel to operate it. So we've been told another porky about the great ambulance service we were going to get in the west of Roscommon, you know, a very rural area where we are at least two hours away from any emergency department that would save a person that got a heart attack. So when is this ambulance base going to open in Loch Lynn 
and are there going to be ambulances supplied rather than being taken from Roscommon or Boyle or anywhere else? Because we have no service in West Roscommon. Answer that question for me. Mar, do you know? Just to be clear, I, I didn't say the ambulance service was perfect in this area. It is far from perfect. You didn't but say what that, I, what, though. What I, am saying, what, I, what I am saying is that there have been positive changes in terms of the air ambulance service, which is um, based in Athlone, um, and which has been very important in getting seriously ill patients to the correct facilities in time. In terms of the Loch Lynn base that you talk about, there are difficulties with regard to resources and staffing of that, and additional resources haven't been given. Um, the Loch Lynn ambulance base is, um, I suppose, an ambulance the, the plan was for it to have a, to use the existing resources to manage that, but we need more resources. I'm not I'm I'm not defending the difficulties that we have here. We do need a better ambulance service to service North and West Roscommon, as, as Michael is speaking about there. And I mean, just in terms of the the other lady's contribution, I mean. I, I share the concerns. I work in the healthcare service and have done for the past 12 years. So I do, I mean, of course... But that man has said that the, there were further porkies, we're told, about the, ambul the ambulance service over the last while. Is that well, true? The, 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 Lachlan, the Lachlan ambulance space has been refurbished at a costing of 70,000. Um, but in terms of the, exist, the existing resources to manage it, um, there aren't additional... It says something about the competence of the people who run in the country, isn't it? That they, they, they refurbish a, 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 a building that they na then can't use. There are, there are ongoing ne negotiations are ongoing with the HSE yeah. regarding that. Uh, John McCormick, <coughs> Chairperson of the Scotland Hospital Action Committee. Uh, I'd like to ask more a direct question that maybe she'd ask Anne Kenny before she goes to any door in Roscommon. Who gave the information uh, and recommended the termination of the accident emergency service in Roscommon? We know it wasn't HICWA. We know it wasn't the consultants. So who did it and why was it done? Because Enda Kenny has made that statement several times, including last year when he was in Roscommon. To clarify on the air ambulance that you were recommending and praising, I was involved in getting it there, so I know. There's one air ambulance that flies during the day and covers the whole of Ireland. The last three incidents in Roscommon Town were serviced by the Coast Guard helicopter because the air ambulance wasn't available. So that's the service you're talking about. So what we're talking about here is real people who have heart attacks and strokes. And if the system works, and if it works in Roscommon, half the time it doesn't work. And that's, that's actually HSE figures that don't hit their targets. But if it works, your, your heart attack patient, your stroke patient, will be in Galway in two hours. Now, as a medical professional, as you say, is that a recommended treatment for a person in an emergency life treatment situation? Okay. Life threatening situation. Uh, okay, go to this one with the black mic. Is it? Yeah. Thanks, Vincent. Uh, my name is Eileen Kelly. I'm actually a nurse and I'm also a member of the Irish Nurses and Midwives Organisation. Uh, following a recent TICWA inspection, uh, the Sacred Heart Hospital down the road is to be downgraded from a 95 to a 50 bedded unit uh, due to structural problems. HICWA is basically uh, forcing the HSE to close beds. The care in the report was commended, so this is not the issue. Today, a government meeting um, in relation to ED task force planning was held to see how many beds could be open to facilitate late discharges. The ED departments in the west of Ireland are under severe pressure. Trolley watch figures for the, for the summer period were the worst ever recorded. For the first eight months of 2015, Galway had 4,549 patients on trolleys, 2,000 more than 2013. 18% of the residents in the Sacred Heart come from the East Galway area. Furthermore, there's a short, shortage of uh, residential care and rehab facilities, which the Sacred Heart has capacity for. Furthermore, every report is confirming the massive, massive shortage of nurses nationally. If further beds are closed, nurses will be forced to go elsewhere and we will never get them back. 
They will simply go to another country where the incentives are greater. What we need here now tonight is a commitment to refurbish the Sacred Heart Unit to the required standard, keeping the beds open, and to ensure a properly funded, publicly funded quality service for older people in Roscommon. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Maura, yeah. Um, I suppose I just want to acknowledge those concerns. Um, in terms of the Sacred Heart Hospital, it is a hugely important facility for our older people in Roscommon. Um, we have an ageing demographic and we need to be able to cater for the needs of those elderly people. Yes, there are challenges at the moment in terms of the capital um, investments that's needed in the region of 11 to 13 million. Um, I suppose I have um, communicated personally to Minister Varadkar that this issue is very important. We need to get a commitment on it and a firm commitment on it that we will get a new build, a 50 bedded um, unit for the people and it serves a huge catchment area um, and it is very, very important. At the moment there are ongoing okay. negotiations between the Department of Health and between the Department of Public Expenditure of Reform um, and we do expect that there will be an announcement in terms of the capital budget in early October. Okay, but Mar, just as a matter of interest, do you expect there's going to be a very severe backlash against Fine Gael in this constituency because of the Roscommon Hospital a &E? Um, I suppose, I mean, I, I'm putting myself before the people as a candidate who is very committed. Um, yes, and, and I think we, we need younger people involved in politics within this region because we need to ensure that it is a region where but you younger understand people... understand the anger of people uh, over I do, the broken I do. promises and, and that people think they were yeah. told lies. Yeah. And, 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 and that's pretty serious. Yeah. And can you see why there would be, uh, to put it mildly, a reluctance to vote for a Fine Gael candidate? Yeah given all that's happened. Yeah, and I, I have met with many people throughout the constituency, and yes, I fully appreciate there have been huge difficulties. We have under, undergone a period of huge turmoil within this country, but, you know... We, we knew we about are, the turmoil at the time we, that the promises were made. Everything was known at that time. <laughs> To I'm from about the uh, Roscommon A and E remaining open. Specifically, that issue. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I suppose. I mean, what I'm saying here tonight is that I was not part of government at that I time. I know, but you, but and you're I representing, I'm part of, but I, you're representing yes. the party of government and, that and, broke and, the promises. Yes, and I, under, I uh, understand. And, the, and, the, and it, 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 if, if uh, on the basis of the by-election results, uh, Fine Gael got, I, I think it got, about 17 percent of the vote in the by-election. Is that correct? Yes. And, and if that's the case, Fine Gael won't get a seat in this constituency. Yeah. Got two I mean, last time, but won't... Will yeah, I'm, I'm under no illusions. It is going to be very difficult to win a seat in this constituency, but I'm putting myself forward as a young candidate who's very committed th to the region and who believes that the recovery that is underway okay. needs to move further to this region. Okay, I want to go to, to another young candidate, Dennis Nocton. <laughs> 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 Don't, don't let the hair deceive you. Uh, Vincent, just to clarify one thing here. Money was not the issue when Roscommon A&E was closed. The issue was the figures that were fabricated at the time, which have been independently audited by Professor John Crown, and he has publicly stated that the figures were wrong. And to date, no one has apologised for that. Now, in relation to... In relation to... In relation to the hospital, yes, there has been huge capital investment in buildings at Roscommon Hospital since the A&E closed, but there has been no investment in relation to emergency services. The medical assessment unit opens for the least number of hours of any medical assessment unit in the country. Mallow, which opened after Roscommon, is open 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Bantry is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and yet we have a Monday to Friday, nine to five medical assessment unit here. The ambulance service, Lachlan, there were three ambulance black spots in the whole country, Toome, Mulrani and West Roscom and East Mayo. Two ambulances came down from the National Ambulance Service. One went to Toome, one went to Mulrani. Mulrani where 50% of the coverage area is water and yet East Mayo and West Roscommon still has not got the ambulance that Hwikikwa have recommended. And the third thing is in relation to the air ambulance. Because of John McDermott, 
and myself persuading the government that was the only reason that air ambulance was put in place. At the time that the A&E closed, James Riley said that while it would provide reassurance to the public that from a medical perspective, the air ambulance would be of no benefit. Yet we have people who have come over from the United States who have looked at the air ambulance service here as limited and all as it is and have recommended that it is a phenomenal service that needs to be expanded on a 24-7 basis because people get sick at night as well. The debate continues after this break. Introducing Ireland's new daily digital edition. Read the highlights, read the headlines, and read the writers who read between the lines. Read the recipes, play the recipes. There's also food for thought. No more crossed out words in your crossword. From wordplay to pressing play. With exclusive highlights from the Barclays Premier League to GAA. Seven days a week, any time of the day. The Times and Sunday Times Digital Edition. Try membership. One euro for 30 days. Mum's friend said that 91% of Irish toddlers, like me, aren't getting enough vitamin D. And 23% of one-year-olds don't get enough iron. Irish scientific research shows that growing up milk increases my vitamin D and iron intakes. So now Mum gives me growing up milk every day as part of my diet. Cow and Gate Growing Up Milk. Feed their personalities. I don't just dream of perfection, I create it every day. Dream Satin Liquid Foundation from Maybelline, New York. Unique air whipped liquid. Glides, feels, looks like satin. Does your foundation sink into pores? Ours floats for poreless coverage and a dewy smooth finish. Dream Satin Liquid Foundation. Make it satin, make it happen. Maybelline, New York. So, you can fix it, right? Yeah. No bother. <sighs> I do want to get back, yeah? Are you going out for some parts, or...? It's five o'clock. And I'm having the alias. Two weeks in Tara Milenos. Gonna be tropic. Yeah, but what about the clothes? Should have me togs on under me trousers. Oh. Yeah, they only have an answer. Real life is at nine to five. That's why we'll meet you to talk mortgages before work, after work, even weekends. EBS Mortgages. We do more. We're a nation blessed with the travel gene. If there are better ways to get around, we'll find them. We're a nation of multitaskers, of food critics, of kings and queens. We're a nation who knows the smartest way to get there. And smart flies Aer Lingus. Get all the calls, texts and data you need for just €25 Euro a month when you switch for value with Tesco Mobile. man with the red microphone down towards the back. Okay. As a victim of an 80-year-old stroke, or an 80-year-old year man of a victim of a stroke, now I have to speak, live with my daughter at the moment on that account. But speaking about it, I am a native of Roscommon Town, and I see the, the Roscommon Hospital being degraded brick by brick. And it's a bloody disgrace what's going on under our feet here and allowing it to go on. Now, another thing about the hospital, we also will have the county home as, or the Sacred Heart Hospital also degraded. They're working away at it at the moment. Now, I pray, I please with the people are to look after the elderly and the youth. And that's all I ask. Thank you very much for your okay. Man with the black microphone there. Good evening, uh, Vincent, and welcome to Roscommon. My name is Dominic Connolly. I've been a councillor in Roscommon since 1991, uh, under the Fine Gael banner. But like Dennis Nocton, when Dennis was expelled over the party, it didn't take me too long to make up my mind to leave as well. Because in the Kinney, stood outside Gleason's uh, townhouse in Roscommon Square and said that if we got two seats here, it would be safe. The a &E was safe. But going back to the figures here that this gentleman has given us tonight, they got over 20,000 votes, Dennis Nocton and Frank Feehan. Over 20,000 votes. And 
not, not, through no fault of your own, Maura, you were a great candidate, but you got around five or 6,000 votes the last time. So that will tell you the issue that Roscommon Hospital is here. And now the Sacred Heart Hospital is under threat. And if anything happens to that, and if that's not upgraded, then I feel the Gale will get, a, 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 won't get 500 votes here the next time. But, and I will be standing full square behind Dennis Stockton in the next general election. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, Michael Fitzroy. Um, can I just come in there, Vincent? Um, the state of affairs in Roscommon at the moment is that the a &E has been shut. The Sacred Heart Hospital up the road there, I spent four hours one day in it. It's a home, it's like a family, what's been done up there. Uh, the head staffing nurse is able to go around and speak to everyone individually. To see the way they're being looked after and to think that we as a nation should be judged on how we treat our elderly. And I will tell you, that the money should be given to that uh, home straight away. Um, in County Roscommon, mental health, and this is another big issue, mental health is the poor relation. I've seen people desperate to get into a hospital that needed help. In Ballinasloe, the same has happened. Health services in County Roscommon, be it mental health, be it ordinary health, or even people, people disabled, people that need meals on wheels, it's a poor relation. I know money has been drifted to Mayo a few times. That shouldn't be on. People in every part of Ireland should be treated fairly. People should be looked after the same, be it Dublin, Cork, Limerick or Roscommon. But that isn't happening and it has to start. Okay, I hope we can move on now from the Roscommon Hospital issue to the issue of mental health generally. What do you want to talk about? Uh, well, the ambulances. Uh, this government sent 778,000 euros out to Sierra, Sierra Leone to deal with the Ebola, to buy ambulances for the Ebola epidemic, right? Which was very good of them, to send zero to Roscommon. Yes, OK, yeah. I'm just concerned for the government uh, candidates here tonight because if they require counselling or cognitive behavioural therapy after tonight, they won't be able to get on Ross Common because those services are nearly closed down at this stage. The, the, um, so I'll refer you to Dublin or Kerry or Cork or somewhere because you talk about the poor relation between mental health. Well, the poor relation of the poor relation is Ross Common. And according to the Constitution, Ross Common people have the same rights and expectations and entitlements as any citizen in this country. Except if you live in Ross Common, you will not have the same access to mental health services as other citizens in other parts of the country. And what's happened in Ross Common in terms of mental health has been a disgrace over the last number of years. They closed the admission unit in Ballinasloe, transferred admissions from there to Ross Common, did not increase one bed, told everyone you will have wonderful community teams. Where are they? There are no rehabilitation teams. There are no assertive outreach teams. And the adult mental health team that should have eight nurses has three. And most of the time, they appear to be back in the acute unit because of short staffing. They have, they have amalgamated their hospitals and their centres, totally contrary to vision for change. What's happened in Roscommon is a disgrace. But I'll leave you with one quote from a document that I just got hold of this evening. The HSE has launched an inquiry into the mental health services in Roscommon. And, it, and, and the comment is the HSC has determined that it is necessary to conduct a review of the quality, safety and governance of services within the Roscommon area of the Galway Roscommon Mental Health Services. Now, Dennis Nocton has been shouting this for the last, we've all been shouting this for the last number of years. It is time the HSC has stood up and is taking action but the need to invest okay. monies and resources in mental health in Roscommon. First of all, to go back to the Sacred Heart Hospital, what's really frustrating about that is the rehabilitation unit, St. Catherine's Ward in the Sacred Heart Hospital, uh, keeps uh, over 350 people out of long-term care each year, saving the HSE about €15.5 million, Euro, which is actually more than the cost of refurbishing that unit. Now, in relation to the mental health service, and I welcome the inquiry, because sadly I know some of the people that have been abused because of the lack uh, of a system and mo proper monitoring being put in place in the mental health services here in Roscommon, and I welcome that. But already 
We've seen before this that management were looking at reviewing the existing services. They've already closed St Luke's unit in Bandeslow, the most modern acute mental health unit in the country after spending close to €3 million Euro on it. They transferred those uh, acute patients to Roscommon Hospital, to the acute unit there. They're now looking at reviewing that service uh, in Roscommon Hospital. I welcome an inquiry and I hope that this inquiry gets to the truth and exposes some of what has been going going on in our mental health services here in Roscommon for a long number of years. Thank you. Okay. Man with the black microphone, yeah. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Tim Stevens. I'm um, a nurse at the Sacred Heart Hospital. Um, just um, because there is a, something called displacement anxiety, which actually um, you'll find when you have actually... I think Fianna Fáil has that, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't usually prove fatal. And in fact, it can in certain institutions where they are faced with closure, the death rate does increase. That's a very serious... So just to reiterate, it's not, it's, Sacred Heart isn't going to close, but they are threatening to dramatically reduce the services, which is going to impinge on the community. But the point I want to bring out, very much echoing John um, there, was that uh, I do think there are major issues with the blueprint that Hick were following. In fact, there's a village at magazine which alerted me to the fact that um, during this very highly vaunted stage when the Health Information and Equality Authority, HICWA, was saying they were looking for stakeholders' involvement, that was all regulated by a public relations company or propaganda company, whatever you call it, is the same thing, called MKC Kleinman. It was actually um, run by all the ideologues in the Progressive Democrats, um, in the Progressive Democrats, and Brian Gagan, I think, at the time was the chairman, Mary Harney's husband. The whole point is, their main agenda was to shut the whole of the public sector. And you don't go into office and say, I'm going to shut all the public hospitals. You say, I want to raise standards. And that's the way you can shut the whole bloody lot. But they, they're chipping away at the edges, and they've decided to pick on Ross Common. Okay, okay, the one with the, the, one with the red microphone, yeah. Red microphone, yeah. Hello, my name is Marion Callan, and I'm, I'm from Balahadreen. And I want to know uh, why are the elderly in Roscommon being discriminated compared to people living in Sligo and Donegal? There ought to be a prompt investigation in the HSE as where to the money is going. It's not going to the needs of the elderly in County Roscommon. For example, I have two elderly gentlemen living in this county. One is over 80 and the other is in his late 70s. Uh, they have only 45 minutes of home help. And we are looking for additional home help and for meals and wheels provided. Of course, they have to pay for these meals. They're not for nothing. I have public representatives here tonight who has written to the HSE and also Mr. Varadkar. And it's from the HSE to Mr. Varadkar and it's handed back from the Mr. Varadkar to the HSE. Now, as far as I can realise, this is a cat and mouse game. And there's no one taking responsibility. So now... We have much left, but the only alternative is we go, I go to the ombuds, ombudsman about this. Elderly are old and vulnerable, and they ought to have advocates for them in this county. So I would like people to see what the views are on this, because our elderly people here in the county is common. It, as everybody is, it's all about mental health, it's about the hospital, it's about everything else, but yes, the elderly in country is common are neglected compared to any other county like, as I said, Johnny Gall and Sligo, they can get things. And I know for a fact people okay. that have to go there and get stuff. And Roscommon is neglected. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> that room there, yeah. <laughs> you have a microphone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Bernie Dowling, and I work with the Carers Association here in Roscommon. And I want to very much link farming and caring. Um, and Dennis is right. Uh, we're all strangled with paperwork in every aspect of our work and there's so much time wasted on administration. My biggest fear uh, for the elderly in County Roscommon is uh, there is um, the fair deal and it's linkage to people's property and anybody that has lived in a rural setting we are very parochial about our property and I am always at fear that the risk of people not uh, allowing themselves to go into a nursing home or get help because they're afraid of losing the property that they own. And that is a privilege that they should be left with. They've paid their tax all over the years and let them get into old age without having that uh, fear over their head. Also, 
um, you know, the percentage of the fair deal is increasing. It started off, I think, it was about 15. It's now 21. And that is very, very, um, you know, worrying. So I just think that, you know, uh, increase home care, uh, there will be less need for the, the facilities to be used or to be uh, manned, in, uh, you know, as it is. Now, we certainly need our Sacred Heart okay. Home. It is an excellent, and we certainly okay. need any of the public body yeah. homes. When you have profit involved with nursing homes, I worry about that for family and for the care. But I'm going, that's me. I'm Frida Fox, Castlery. Now, this government tried to close the Rosalie unit here in Castlery for the old people. It's a first-class unit. They wanted to put them from here and there and shift them from one nursing home to the other. Those people are in that place for the last 10, 20 years. And they're coming to the end of their term of life, whatever. And they're taking that away from them. This place is first class. The nurses are brilliant. And they're in their own little community. And they know where they are. And they wanted to change all that and send all people who do not know where they are. They know the people they're with. And this government... Catherine Lynch came down here to Castlery and tried to close that hospital, close the beds or limit the beds. How dare she? She'll come and herself when she'll be admitted to one of those. And we'll see how she will like it. Now, number two, I just want to say two words about the Sacred Heart Home in Viscommon. That Sacred Heart Home has been there for the last, for years, since I was a child myself. And I'll tell you, Vincent, it's first class. And as you know, Vince, when you come to a certain stage in life, more than yourself and myself. <laughs> yet, you'd like a little bit of comfort. Now, <laughs> now, Vincent, if you ever wanted a month's respite or whatever, I'm you could come respite, down to I? the Sacred Heart and I guarantee you, you'll get first class treatment and you won't want to go back to Dublin at all. <laughs> We take a break now. Join us after the break. Introducing Ireland's new daily digital edition. Read the highlights, read the headlines, and read the writers who read between the lines. Read the recipes, play the recipes. There's also food for thought. No more crossed out words in your crossword. From wordplay to pressing play. With exclusive highlights from the Barclays Premier League to GAA. Seven days a week, any time of the day. The Times and Sunday Times Digital Edition. Try membership. One euro for 30 days. Mum's friend said that 91% of Irish toddlers, like me, aren't getting enough vitamin D. And 23% of one-year-olds don't get enough iron. Irish scientific research shows that growing up milk increases my vitamin D and iron intakes. So now mum gives me growing up milk every day as part of my diet. Cow and gate growing up milk. Feed their personalities. I don't just dream of perfection, I create it every day. Dream Satin Liquid Foundation from Maybelline, New York. Unique air-whipped liquid. Glides, feels, looks like satin. Does your foundation sink into pores? Ours floats for poreless coverage and a dewy smooth finish. Dream Satin Liquid Foundation. Make it satin, make it happen. Maybelline, New York. We're a nation blessed with the travel gene. If there are better ways to get around, we'll find them. We're a nation of multitaskers, of food critics, of kings and queens. We're a nation who knows the smartest way to get there. And smart flies Aer Lingus. Airwaves in a bottle. So you can always keep that kick handy. Get all the calls, texts and data you need for just €25 Euro a month when you switch for value with Tesco Mobile.
it's also time for us to get somebody from Fianna Fáil to speak. And, uh, Councillor Rachel Doherty in Roscommon County Council. Um, I suppose the first thing I'd like to do is just comment on the situation with regard to the uh, closure of the A&E. Just to make one brief comment, I don't think that government uh, candidates actually realise the anger, frustration, but ultimately the feeling of being let down by politics and by politicians in County Roscommon. And you spoke earlier on about uh, the, I suppose, previous politicians, some passed away, including my own late father, and others that are still here. But I think that the one thing that people still want to believe that is possible, and that is that their politicians, even when a general election comes upon them, that their politicians will tell them the truth. And to think that two seats were won by Fine Gael on the back of a lie and that's what's happened here in Roscommon. We are actually a template in the country of what can happen by telling a lie. And when a lie was told here in Roscommon and two seats were won, people couldn't believe afterwards that two months later the A&E was closed. Now, I just want to continue on to mention about mental health. It's something that I'm very, very interested in. I've been working very hard on. The situation with regard to mental health in Roscommon is absolutely appalling. We have been constantly asking for Kathleen Lynch to come down here and meet with members of Roscommon County Council. And as a councillor for the last number of years here, and I have a number of colleagues here with me this evening, it has befallen us as councillors to engage in public protest, to have special county council meetings, to have petitions as we've recently had in Castlery with regard to Oris Mahar Paul. We're constantly going out to fire brigade action and asking the people to come and stand with us to, to keep places open by simply by public protest. And the message that I would like to send back here this evening is we want to see decency return to politics in County Roscommon. And Maura, you're a young candidate. There are many of us that are young candidates. But at the end of the day, what we don't want to see is people who are going to turn around and say, we share your concerns. We want to know what your commitment is. And all of the other candidates are going here. And that's for anybody okay. that's going. Thank okay. you. Okay, Rachel, uh, just before you, before you sit down. First of all, are you going, do you expect to be a Fianna Fáil candidate in well, Vincent, I would I love to announce that on your programme tonight. <laughs> I'd absolutely, I never thought I'd be asked that question by yourself. But as I said to your uh, uh, person, the lady who rang me earlier on today, we have yet to have our convention. We hope to have it in the next number of weeks. I, along with other people in the party, are interested in going forward. But we want to speak to our party leader, also the spokespersons on various different issues that we're talking about here tonight. And we want to get commitments from them on issues so it would be very premature for me to indicate okay. what I'm doing. You, you, you said I'm with a black microphone. Uh, Vincent, uh, Frank Sumner, Anti-Austerity Alliance. Uh, we could talk about this all night, but if we make a comparison to the NHS in Britain that spends £90 billion uh, uh, pounds on 60 million people in a, in a universal health service, and we look at, uh, in Ireland, a population of 4.3 million, where we spend £14 billion uh, on a service that's not universal. It shows you that we have some HSE managers that are, are earning more than some European leaders uh, uh, nationally. And as for uh, Born Again uh, Fine Gael under Renoa and Born Again Fianna Fáil, nobody's buying into those stories. We need total transparency in politics for the good of the country to move forward. Okay. <clears throat> And it's born, born Again Fine Gael, isn't that correct? I, I don't know whether it's correct or not. I'm sure nobody else in the room knows either. But, what I'm but, but is, you're a member of Renewa, yes. so you would know more than yes. anyone else we're, around. Uh, I don't believe we're born again. Uh, how's I the believe difference? we're new. What's the difference? Well, people, the gentleman there that spoke uh, critically as well about Renewa, he asked about transparency. We really need... Yes, we do. We absolutely do. And Renewa have pledged through a lot of their policies for that transparency. Yeah, Fine Gael To make the, the public yeah, sector yeah, yeah, public, yeah, yeah. to make the people more yeah, engaged. Yeah, Fine Gael said the same, of their, yeah. Democratic all of their, revolution, yeah. All of their, um, their thing to the public is, get involved. So if people, you know, if people do want to sit and slate the party, why not try and get and involved and us, make a contribution? And this is why... how is you, the Renewa any different to Fine Gael, of what Fine Gael purported to be in 2011? Look... 
Lucinda Creighton left the party on that very ground. Okay? Oh, she left the party no, she, on the yeah, ground yeah, of yeah, the yeah, referendum yeah, on the abortion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, that was the, the straw that broke the, the camel's back, Vincent. Yeah, she, she, had already, the, she was already unhappy in Fine Gael. She was already she was unhappy still, with the party happy. system. She was incredibly happy in no, Fine Gael. No, no, yes, she, she was had a, she had a professionally. Job, of course she did. So why would you leave that? Over and back to Europe, sharing an executive jet with Andy Kennedy. What? Why would you leave what? that what? job? What? Why would you leave it? Beca because she discovered a principle on abortion, which she seems to have lost now. Yeah. No, I, 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 you need to clarify. I don't think she has lost her principles. I think she's very clear. No, I didn't say she lost listen. her principles, but the abortion issue seems to have been gone down her, uh, uh, down her radar a bit. I don't know what tell you us, mean by down tell us, again. Tell She's us very what, clear. How is Renewa any different to Fine Gael? Look, um, Renewa have asked the people... Eddie Hobbs. Na, yeah, forget what? about Eddie Hobbs is an economic advisor, OK? So if there's any better economic advisors in the audience, I would suggest that you come and talk to me afterwards because we could do with all the help we can get as a nation. Yeah. Eddie Hobbs is an economic advisor. Okay, some people love him, some people hate him. Yeah. Some people love Vincent, some people hate him. The bottom line is, <laughs> Renua. Re, the bottom line about Renua is, I'm sorry, just yeah. let me finish. No, yeah. no, you'll get the mic in a minute, just for a minute. Renua are promising to engage the people. So become engaged. We can sit and whinge and moan all we like, but it, inevitably we have to make our contribution. And this is where I am coming from as a mother, as a woman. As a person who has got involved in community development from the time my children went to yeah, preschool. Yeah, yeah. yeah hold you, on a minute. Don't Schools, answer the question, the, how no, is the it question, any different to Philly Gale? It's completely different. But tell us it how. Is, it is asking the people to become an, it's a grassroots up party. We're not a top down party, okay? There's little differences it in terms of. doesn't have any grassroots. There's no Roots yes, at all. but we're building what? roots. What? Vincent, I have spent the last few months going around the country to west, northwest, building grassroots. We have constituents. Building we, grassroots. Yes, we have. <laughs> Vincent, to talk to the agricultural advisor. Vincent, there. Vincent, yes, 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 oh, and yeah. we will. <laughs> um, my husband is my agricultural advisor. Where is he? Um, anyway. Uh, we have gone around the country, myself, the West Northwest. We have built 40 constituencies, not all candidates emerging as of yet, but still constituencies. Now, they are grassroots. You cannot knock something that hasn't actually begun to flourish. If people tune, go on the website, look at the policies, come and talk to us, ask questions. It's a very promising new party. It does promise. And, and you, and you, but you can't answer the question. But what is How your question? Different, and tell us in what significant way is when you are different to Fine Gael. In what significant way? And we'll just give us one. Well, ju just, just one. It is, it is offering to listen. Okay, we'll, we, we'll just take the part to listen. Okay, oh, okay. No. You don't want to hear that, Trevor. What? Okay. Oh, God. The one major outstanding difference, I suppose, that people will see immediately is there will be no party whip system in matters of moral or social conscience. I think that is a big difference. A party who asks you, who, when you enrol or when you show an interest, ask you to sign a code of conduct and a code of ethics, I think that says something very different about a party, yeah? All right. Uh, okay, that's. Uh, <laughs> is, is people before profit interested in codes of conduct? Uh, or, uh, uh, no. we're, we're very interested in fairness. I think that's where the establishment parties come short. I don't think fairness is at the top of their agenda. I don't think. What do you mean by fairness? Well, everybody should be part of the recovery. What and, do you mean by that? Well, there's 21 percent of our children are still going hungry during the week. We have so many people on trolleys, old people waiting five days, nine days, sitting on trolleys. That, that's not fair. It can't be fair. Okay? So we fixed the country for the 1%, and the other 99% are expected to believe that they're going to change. It's not true. For instance, employment, and many more people are in employment now than were previously, and many fewer people are, are in unemployment than were previously. Well, 80,000 are in the job schemes. No, no, ignoring those. Well, you the can't ignore them because they're part of the figures. Climate has gone up very significantly. But 80,000 of them are in jobs. No, schemes. that's not true. Independently of that, a well, very significant number of people have got jobs over the last while. Something in the region of, I think, over 100,000. Mm -hmm. And they do not include people in the job schemes. 
we welcome any job creation, but a, a huge part of that figure is the 80,000 that are in job schemes, and they are not real jobs. Councillor Lawrence Fallon, I was in Fine Gael, but I left you to the hospital issue with Dennis Norton. A lot of discussion has happened here tonight about health, and rightly so, and I agree with everything that has been said. But the, you may be forgiven for thinking that nothing is happening in Roscommon, that we're all in a bad situation. And we have a lot of difficulties. Successive governments have not helped Roscommon well. But the people of Roscommon have fought hard for themselves. We have the highest percentage of young people leaving third level university getting a degree. And I think that's a measure of the future people see for their young people in County Roscommon. The difficulty is that only 13% of them that graduate in any one year are likely to get a job in Roscommon. So I want to ask whoever is in the next government, what measures are they going to put in place that at least more of these young people who are well qualified can get a job in County Roscommon? And secondly, that the next government will take whatever step it can to get, young, get people employed in Roscommon. Think of the barracks in Atlone. They could have kept the people there, they moved them to Kildare, where houses were twice as dear to rent, and yet we have all the infrastructure here with regard to houses, roads and everything at very realistic prices, and yet people are not getting jobs in Roscommon. Thank you. We we'll take another break. Join us shortly. Mum's friend said that 91% of Irish toddlers, like me, aren't getting enough vitamin D. And 23% of one-year-olds don't get enough iron. Irish scientific research shows that growing up milk increases my vitamin D and iron intakes. So now Mum gives me growing up milk every day as part of my diet. Cow and Gate Growing Up Milk. Feed their personalities. I don't just dream of perfection, I create it every day. Dream Satin Liquid Foundation from Maybelline, New York. Unique air whipped liquid. Glides, feels, looks like satin. Does your foundation sink into pores? Ours floats for poreless coverage and a dewy smooth finish. Dream Satin Liquid Foundation. Make it satin, make it happen. Maybelline, New York. Introducing Ireland's new daily digital edition. Read the highlights, read the headlines, and read the writers who read between the lines. Read the recipes, play the recipes. There's also food for thought. No more crossed out words in your crossword. From wordplay to pressing play. With exclusive highlights from the Barclays Premier League to GAA. Seven days a week, any time of the day. The Times and Sunday Times Digital Edition. Try membership. One euro for 30 days. Now at Cash and Carry Kitchens, prices on selected kitchens include free fitting. This high gloss kitchen just one six nine nine, including free fitting. This Brentwood Ivory kitchen just one nine nine nine, including free fitting. And all our kitchens qualify for the home renovation incentive, saving you hundreds of euros. See in store for details. So you can fix it, right? Yeah. No bother. <sighs> I do want to get back, yeah. Are you going out for some parts, or...? It's five o'clock. And I'm having the alias. Two weeks in Tara Milena, it's going to be tropic. Yeah, but what about the clothes? Should have me togs on under me trousers. Oh. Yeah, they only have an answer. Real life is at nine to five. That's why we'll meet you to talk mortgages before work, after work, even weekends. EBS Mortgages. We do more. Get all the calls, texts and data you need for just €25 Euro a month when you switch for value with Tesco Mobile. The man with the blue microphone, yeah. Yes, uh, Seamus Duffy is my name. I am chairman of Ballinus Low Area Community Development Limited, a voluntary company that was set up to promote Ballin and Slow. Now we're, we're used to being on the periphery of the region, we're on the periphery of the old East Galway constituency, we're now on the periphery of the Roscommon East Galway constituency. But to remind everybody, we're the largest urban area and you require the largest urban area to be commercially and economically viable for a region to, to do well. Um, similar to my hometown of Balhadrine, we've suffered very significantly over the last 20 years. But we as a company have several initiatives that we've put in place. I'll just give you a brief outline of what we've done before I put. I have two specific questions to put to the panel. But first of all, we bought 
we, we bought a, a premises from the old St. Bridges Hospital. We've now 200 people employed in it, um, over 16 businesses supported there. We bring out a bi-monthly magazine, 56-page magazine, distributed free into the local economy, promoting what is good about the community. We have some of the best sporting facilities in the country. Someone said to me that if Ballon slow sporting facilities turned on their lights, we'd be like the Great Wall of China, we would be able to be seen from the moon. But just going back, our main problem is around the commercial viability of the centre of the town. We're fortunate in some ways that we have a 15% vacancy rate compared to 22% nationally. But at the same time, we do need support to support the existing businesses that are there and, secondly, to make it economically viable for new businesses to set up. Okay. Just the second point is around uh, existing, existing, the existing company that we have, 60, 60 jobs. Now, you're looking, well over your minutes. In yeah, fact, you're well over three minutes. Yeah, they're, they're looking to buy uh, a, large, a large warehouse. We have none viable to keep this business locally. They have to go to the larger urban centres where there's an oversupply of these type premises that, can, that they can buy at half the price it costs to build. So there are my two questions to the panel. What can they do to help the sustainability okay. of towns like Ballinasloe? Okay, the man with the red microphone, yeah. Hello Vincent and panel. Uh, my name is Emma Cork and I'm an independent. Vincent, it's great to hear so much talk about poor cousins and when you come west of the Shannon you can really see that everything is the poor cousin. Economically, socially, health-wise. Um, and I think it's some indictment that we have two independents representing the people of Roscommon, South Leitrim, Roscommon, East Galway on the main panel tonight. Because this government, along with successive governments, have been on an agenda to close down rural Ireland. And rural Ireland is fighting back. But we now need the support in government and on the right side of Linder House to make sure that we can do that. And I suppose the question I'd like to ask is of the parties that are here tonight and in fairness to the new ones as well. Is it really going to be all that different? We heard a lot about talk about change and as I said many a time this time last year, Fianna Fáil seemed to have got Fianna Fáil Alzheimer's for the most part. Is it a thing that if we got independence into government, will they be any different to what we had in there before and will the new party be any different? Okay, the man with the, the woman with the black microphone, yeah. Good evening, Vincent. Uh, my name is Carmel Flynn. I'm a floating voter. My question tonight Which is... Which way are you floating? <laughs> uh, I don't know where I land yet. Well, no, from where are you floating? <laughs> Nowhere, actually. But, but, but did you vote for you the last time? No. Vote, who did you vote for the last time? I wasn't in the country for the election. I, I, and if you had been in the country for the election, who would you have voted for? It's history now. I'll get on with the question okay, go if you on, don't yeah. mind. <laughs> My question tonight is one of the perennials, and that is jobs. Jobs for the village of Ruski on the River Shannon in North Roscommon lost 650 jobs in 2002 when its meat factory had a fire. Jobs went to Eden Dairy from there. No jobs have been created in 13 years. More jobs have been lost since then as a result of that closure, with the closure of the hotel and garage and mini market. Almost 100 jobs between both. Please send jobs to Ruski before all our young people have immigrated and this lovely village disappears off the map. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Vincent, uh, my name is Pascal Fismaris. I'm a Fianna Fáil County Councillor. Vincent, I just want to talk about the demise of a small... Do you hope to be a candidate in the next election? I, I do, Vincent, yes. Do you expect to be a candidate in the next election? Well, hopefully, yes. <laughs> okay. Hopefully. Rachel, Vincent... you're in trouble. <laughs> yes, Rachel. <laughs> uh, Vincent, I just want to talk about... I'm, I'm also a shopkeeper, and I just want to talk about, I suppose, the demise of small shops and the demise of town centres and small, uh, I suppose, small villages. Um, what can the government do for us, the shopkeepers? Well... Uh, I suppose as a county councillor we're always put under pressure to reduce rates but unless the government give us adequate funding we cannot reduce rates. Now in 2008 uh, Roscommon County Council received 23 million from the local government fund. As of today we've received 9 million.
Now, that is made up of the local property tax. And we were given the impression by the Fine Gael government that once the local property tax came in, they would be in a position to reduce rates for commercial users like myself. Now, this hasn't happened. Now, we need rates reduced, and we need that. And the only way we can do that is if the local government fund is funded properly. We as the county councillors always get the blame for this, but unless the government give us proper funding, we cannot do this. And we need it to, I suppose, incentivise our towns, because <laughs> without that, our small shops cannot use that money in order to do up their premises and catch up on the big guys. Okay, yeah. We'll, we'll go, to, go to a man who's, a, who's still floating. Are you Ali. still a floating voter? Uh, well, it's related to it. Within the next six months, we will be asked to go and vote for the <coughs> government. <laughs> now, um, a government has to be formed irrespective of how many parties are going before us. As I said, I'm a floating voter because I am disgusted with all the political parties uh, that are representing us here in Roscommon. Because our county has been neglected. I mentioned ghost estates at the beginning. The, the worst thing that ever happened in this county of Roscommon was the rural renewal because it was misused by developers and speculators. And our villages and towns are destroyed because there have been ghost estates in practically every village and town. There is one town in Roscommon, Tulsk. At the last census, I think there was 56% unoccupied uh, houses in that town. In my town of Balahadreen, and I did the census myself, there was 33% unoccupied houses, probably a lot more now. So I would like to know, what will the new government do to try and rescue us in this county? We have been forgotten about. We were told that a West of Ireland teacher would be good for Roscommon. Now, I don't see it. We have got no jobs in the last four or five years and no prospects. In fact, I don't think the teacher came in. To the, he wouldn't even go to Hyde Park for the comic final because he knows... <laughs> He knows that he would get abuse. So uh, I know that we are coming to the end of the debate, and I, you will be asking all the, you will be asking all the candidates what are they going to do for Roscommon? What are they going to do for me? I have spent 53 years working, paying taxes all my life. I've been ripped off by this government and the previous government. Let's see an end to that. Man with the yellow microphone, yeah. Thanks, Vincent. John Hanley, Chairman of Roscommon IFA. Agriculture is the backbone of life in this constituency. It's what keeps families living in rural areas and is the economic base for our villages and towns. A major difficulty for farmers at the moment is price volatility. Another major problem is the need to help young people get into farming and recognise that many young farmers in this region will need to have off-farm employment in the future. There is a wider issue in terms of rural economies, the need to breed life back into towns and villages to encourage people setting up businesses in rural areas with proper supports, including 21st century broadband. Rural communities also need equal access when it comes to all state services and supports. Red tape is a huge problem. Schemes are becoming more complex. Farmers are required to do more and more business online, yet there is no broadband. The Department of Agriculture needs to get real in terms of what farming life is about. Every week I have to reassure elderly farmers who are faced with cross-compliance inspections. They are worried sick about these inspections and while they are trying their level best to meet all the requirements of the schemes, they can never be sure that all is in order because the playing field is changing all the time. Okay. Okay, I put those... Anybody want to get in on these, these uh, farming issues? Okay, Michael, yeah. First of all, um, Vincent, um, the most important thing to keep rural Ireland alive is the family farm. And it has been forgot about. Families are being driven out of rural Ireland for one simple reason, the way the whole cap has been done. We have farmers in parts of this country getting up to 400,000 in a single farm payment and farmers in this area getting 2,000, 3,000. That's not how you protect family farms. The stats will tell you that 95% of everything earned by farmers in this area will be spent locally. 
We have a problem in this area, in Roscommon, East Galway. We have it in Mayo, where young farmers, what we call the forgotten farmer, farmers that started farming before 2008, hadn't the money to buy entitlements, that started off with maybe a few calves, a few sheep, started from the bottom, the bottom up. And these people have been forgotten by Simon Covey, forgotten completely by the EU. These have been left with payments of around seven, eight hundred euro. Will you encourage some youngster to stay on land with that? The other problem that is affecting farms in the area, Vincent, is a lot of forestry. Forestry is, is being uh, planted in different areas. And farmers, and it's, this has to happen, didn't it, uh, Vincent? It, farmers will need to buy land beside them. And at the moment, there is big commercial operators because of the breaks involved, coming in and taking them clean out of it. If we ever want to bring rural Ireland back, if we want to bring Roscommon, make it vibrant, if we want to make every town in Ireland vibrant, we have got to bring broadband. We have got to put in infrastructure. This government is taking out the... T the, the we were in the 10T. This government abandoned it for the west of Ireland. Look at the map that's done. Limerick to Dublin, Cork to Dublin, Dublin to Newry. Forget about the West. That was the attitude of this government. And if we don't do that, and if we don't bring broadband, if we don't put the infrastructure in, and if we don't protect the family farm, we have red tape. Farmers are afraid of a car pulling up outside because of the red tape, and to be quite frank about it, the bullshit that's gone on in this country. EU. <laughs> Down through the years, Vincent, politicians have gone out to the EU not knowing the pop they were buying. It's the farmers in this area, the farmers right around the west of Ireland that are being savaged and ravaged by politicians that went out and done bad deals for them. It has to change, it's got to change, or we were better to tell Europe where to go if that's the way it's going to be. Okay, all right. Yeah. Maura, do you want to get in on this? Yeah, please. Um, I suppose just to point out firstly, there has been £12.5 billion given in terms of cap, and that is very important to support our agriculture sector. I come from a farming background. I'm also very involved in Mochrana Firma, so it is really important, as Deputy Fitzmaurice has said, that we do encourage young farmers to get involved. Um, young farmers have been prioritised in the schemes. However, I am very much aware of a cohort of farmers that commenced farming before 2008 that find themselves excluded. And we do need to do more to ensure that we get younger farmers engaged and ensure that it becomes a viable option for them. Because it, farming is not, is, is not an easy career. Um, and I suppose the big point that you know, John Hanley has made from, from the IFA is very important. The farmers who are based in this region support our local economies and support our rural towns. And it also goes back to a major point that Seamus Duffy made um, from Ballinasloe in relation to the viability of our rural towns. We do need to breathe life back into the heart of those towns and we need to get you know, government action in relation to um, rates incentive schemes to ensure that um, our rural centres become vibrant again. I suppose the way in which we do business has changed. Location has become less of an issue in the, in, in the sense that people travel now to get services, to buy products, to look for the best value. Um, and with that change, we need to, I suppose, respond to that change. And we need to ensure that we are supporting employers and entrepreneurs to set up in the heart of town centres. So I very much take those concerns and I suppose that's something that I would be working hard on. I come from a town myself that has um, really suffered in terms of the, the heart of the town with, with business closure. Vincent, first of all, the big problem today with agriculture is that the filing cabinet is more important than the animals in the field. And, and that's where the problem is. Now, in practical terms... In, in practical terms... As we speak at the moment, the Department of Agriculture inspectors are going around the country. At the end of the year, they'll impose penalties on farmers. And that farmer will go into the mart the following week and he'll talk to his next door neighbour and he'll say, I had a department inspection and I got A, B and C penalty. 
And the neighbour will say to him, well, I had the department out two years ago and I got the exact same penalties. Why, at the end of the year, doesn't the Department of Agriculture publish exactly what penalties have been imposed, why they've been imposed, and explain to farmers how they can actually avoid them? Because when a penalty is applied to a farmer, not only does the farmer lose it and the community lose it, but that money goes directly back to Brussels, so the country as a whole loses. So we drive down the number of penalties and we drive down the fear that's there at the moment uh, in relation to on-farm inspections. In relation to the issue of broadband, the Irish taxpayer has paid for the ESB to roll out a broadband network across the country, for Borgosh to roll out a broadband network across the country, for um, Irish Rail and the Metropolitan Area Network. All of those are gathering dust and have been for the last 10 years. What about putting them all together, putting them out for commercial companies to go in and utilise those and roll out high-speed broadband right across this country tomorrow morning, not in 20 years' time. Okay, okay. And the, the final point I just want to make, uh, and it comes back to Theresa Hang Campbell. I have three small kids in school at the moment, and I know the issues that, that she's raising. But just, I met a parent at the weekend who has a child in a special needs class. And that child gets OT and physio, the equivalent of one minute per day when that child is in school. Now, how can we support children and ensure that they have equal opportunity when they're not getting access to those basic services that Teresa is talking about? We take a final break. Join us for the remaining. Get ready. New Superstar Mascara by L'Oreal. For show-stopping lashes. One, primer, volumizes. Two, black fibers, lengthen. Superstar. Lashes look supersized, super long. New Superstar Mascara by L'Oreal Makeup Designer Paris. Are you ready? Mum's friend said that 91% of Irish toddlers, like me, aren't getting enough vitamin D. And 23% of one-year-olds don't get enough iron. Irish scientific research shows that growing up milk increases my vitamin D and iron intakes. So now mum gives me growing up milk every day as part of my diet. Cow and gate growing up milk. Feed their personalities. Introducing Ireland's new daily digital edition. Read the highlights, read the headlines, and read the writers who read between the lines. Read the recipes, play the recipes. There's also food for thought. No more crossed out words in your crossword. From wordplay to pressing play. With exclusive highlights from the Barclays Premier League to GAA. Seven days a week, any time of the day. The Times and Sunday Times Digital Edition. Try membership. One euro for 30 days. <laughs> We were Aircom. Now we are Air. Come with us. Live life on air. We're a nation blessed with the travel gene. If there are better ways to get around, we'll find them. We're a nation of multitaskers, of food critics, of kings and queens. We're a nation who knows the smartest way to get there. And smart flies Aer Lingus. Get all the calls, texts and data you need for just €25 Euro a month when you switch for value with Tesco Mobile. Of the program.